Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video you guys are going to get to meet Aegon, my leopard gecko, who I've had since January and it is now May and I haven't introduced him yet. And the reason for that is he had some strange health issues that neither I nor the person who had him before could have really foreseen. And so I wanted to wait it out and see like what happened with him before I was uh, going to introduce him. So Aegon was a baby gecko born with white and yellow syndrome. When the breeder realized he had white and yellow syndrome, he was immediately pet only and he was rehomed to me. The breeder actually reached out to me and said, do you have space for a neurological gecko? And I was like, yes, I do. And then that took in the gecko. Whenever there is a gecko born with a neurological disorder, especially if it's associated with the morph, you do not breed that gecko. That's the ethical thing to do, and the breeder did the ethical thing. I just want to make that very clear. Even after Aegon had unrelated health issues um, to the white and yellow syndrome, they reached out and they were like, oh my god, is there anything I can do? Like, I'm so sorry. And so, yeah, like, all props to the breeder who chose the ethical thing and who cared for Aegon even after he was no longer there. So I just want to make that really clear. So Aegon was born with white and yellow syndrome, which is a neurological disorder that is associated with the white and yellow morph. However, not all lines of white and yellow have this disorder or have the capacity for the disorder. It is not the same thing as Enigma syndrome. I'll talk about that more at length in a separate video because it's a, a tricky subject. It's a, definitely not something that's like going to be short and sweet. So th that really isn't a place for this video, but I will talk about it at a later time. So just subscribe and then, you know, notification bell. And when that goes out, you'll have it. But Aegon, like I said, was born with white and yellow syndrome, which just makes him a bit reactive. He has um, unbalanced movements. He can be a bit jerky in his movements. And so he just needs a little bit of assistance. Like he he can hunt pretty well on his own, but tongue feeding is way easier. And it's really best not to startle him because when you startle him, then he just has like a, a freak out. You know, he his body just kind of moves in all kinds of directions. So it's best to keep him calm, like not freaked out, and also to tongue feed him. Other than that, he's pretty good. With the exception of a kidney issue that he has that I think the only reason I noticed it is because I have a gecko with this issue already, which we'll talk about in a minute. But the breeder didn't know about it. And when he first arrived, he was like a little bit bloated in his abdomen, just a little bit. And I was like, it's possible he just has like a weird body shape because sometimes white and yellows or like, you know, geckos with issues do have a weird body shape. I was like, that's possible. Perhaps he needs to have a good poop. You know, perhaps he just needs to have a good poop after his travels. So I was like, I'll keep an eye on it. So I let like two weeks go by and at the end of those two weeks, his abdomen was bigger than it was when he first came home, even though he was pooping and eating. So I was like, okay, vet trip. So I took him to the vet and I told the vet I suspected it was water retention. And the reason I suspected that it was water retention is because one, like I said, I have a gecko who has this issue already, but two, Aegon is a white gecko. All leopard geckos are translucent enough that you can see through their skin, but white geckos are especially. And when I held Aegon up to the light, the fluid was clear and you could see his organs were pushed up a bit and the fluid was filling his abdomen and then you could see straight through him pretty much. So that's how I could tell it was fluid, like a clear fluid. So took him to the vet. The vet was able to pull out fluid from his abdomen and also Aegon peed all over him, like a long, long stream of pee. And as soon as the vet said that, I was like, that is the same issue Benjen has. So Benjen is a gecko of mine who you all love very much. He's got that really big underbite. He's a beautiful boy. He's definitely special. He's definitely <laughs> a pet only. And he has an issue every so often, it's only a few times a year, where he will retain water in his bladder and when I hold him he'll like squeeze it out all at once all over me and he's always done this ever since I got him and because he's never had any sort of issues otherwise there was nothing to be done about it it was just something to keep an eye on but Aegon is the same type of morph as soon as I saw the bloating and like the fluid through his body I was like interesting I was like I wonder if when the vet takes the fluid out of his abdomen if he will also pee on the vet and sure enough he did a long pee stream and I kind of like exclaimed like oh my god I knew it when I was on the phone with the vet because it was like a I was in the car because of COVID so I was like oh my god I knew it and the vet was like chill girl no but but seriously I kind of screamed and I was like I have a gecko that's like this 
that has the exact same issue and he's had it for as long as I've known him. There wasn't anything to be done because he's too small. Aegon is too small. Like leopard geckos to begin with are small reptiles, but he was a baby. So there really wasn't anything they could do that would lead to some concrete answers. Like for example, what they wanted to do was a blood draw and a blood draw will be able to like look at their levels and it can't do that because he's too small. You wouldn't be able to get a big enough sample and it could also injure him in the process. So we couldn't do that. What we could do was take out the fluid and the vet assessed the fluid and he said that he didn't see any proteins, he didn't see any like cancerous cells, and he said it was mostly made up of water. So I took Aegon home and a few weeks later, maybe like three or four weeks later, he had to go back in to have fluid drawn again. The difference this time, however, was he peed all over the vet again, and the vet was only able to get a really small amount of fluid from the abdomen. So the vet says, all this bloating, all of this pressure in the body is coming from the bladder. He's not able to process out, like, the hydration or the water intake that he has he's not able to process it well and then when there's pressure applied it just comes out all at once and that's exactly like benjen he'll just like if i if i grab him and he squirms he'll pee all over me and that's only a few times a year though so then i was like yeah this is kind of like you know what i'm used to somehow i just randomly also have a gecko that has this weird issue so the vet wrote it down as congenital kidney issues like there's nothing to be done about it and the only thing that can be done is to continue to help him purge his bladder. So then a few weeks later, I did this all by myself. I, I, I like, you know, kind of have to make him a bit uncomfortable. Like he's got to squirm around a bit and then he'll let it all out. So I did that and he did it just great. And he peed a lot. He peed a lot. And I have like a picture of the towel that you can see all the wet spots on from where he peed. It's, it's a lot for that small of a gecko. In fact, my vet took his weight before and after the, the second fluid draw which is basically where he just peed the whole time and he lost five grams of fluid which is a lot in a small gecko like that so then after his third one which was with me he hasn't done it again since like he hasn't done it for me no matter how much squirming or anything he, he won't let go of it however he's done it on his own he will sometimes have these like when he uses the bathroom, when he poops, he'll let out an extreme amount of moisture. And I mean, his whole entire paper towel is just saturated and I have to take it out and put a new one in, which is why he's still on paper towel. But yeah, he's been able to purge it himself now, which is a good thing, but it's definitely something that I'm keeping an eye on as he grows. It's like kind of like a developing situation. He's still eating, he's still pooping, he's still shedding, he is still growing, but it's definitely a unique situation. So I'm just really happy that like, they reached out to me and were like, hey, I've got a gecko with white nail syndrome. And I was like, cool, I have space. Because like, imagine if this had been to someone else, they might not have even known how to deal with this because like out of the 32 geckos that I have, only one, and I have a bunch of special needs to be fair, but only one has this fluid issue other than Aegon, that's Benjen. So like how lucky was it that Aegon ended up in a home that already had experience with this fluid retention and kidney issue? Like, it just almost feels like fate that Aegon ended up here. Aegon does have these issues. I don't know how they will affect him later in his life. I mean, having Benjen makes me feel quite confident that Aegon will live just fine with these issues and that he will just need a little bit of help here and there. His white and yellow syndrome, like a lot of my geckos, will probably get better with age, but will never go away. So that isn't really a concern of mine though, because I'm so used to neurological geckos. It don't even matter. I'm so used to it. That's, that's Aegon. That's his story. And he's been here for a few months now. This is a permanent home. Later on down the road, when he's big enough, I may go through with the blood draw so that we can see just like what might be going on but there really isn't anything to do even the vet said that like this is just something that he has that he was born with and it's going to be with him for his whole life so that is my gecko Aegon. he makes number 32 wait 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 yeah he makes 32 i was right but um, he makes my 32nd gecko. He will not be my last leopard gecko ever, but he is my last leopard gecko for like the short term future because when I have a house, 
when I have a house, I'm upgrading my enclosures again. And uh, all the special needs ones will stay in these type of enclosures. But my my um, non-special needs geckos are getting like the coolest enclosure ever, which I'm actually gonna, about to go record a video for now. But it's like my dream enclosure. I'm very excited about that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like or comment down below. Also, please subscribe, hit the notification bell. And with all that said, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Eggy boy. Egg boy. Oh my gosh, there's a hair on my phone. I can't even see you. Hold on, hold on, egg. Egg boy. Yeah, good job. You just got calcium in your water. Well done, my dude. Well done. No, no. What are you doing? Stay there. No, no. Stay in your house. I will bring the food to you. I'll bring the food to you. Stay in your house, my dude. Uh oh. Stay in your house, my dude. Why are you still climbing out? Hmm? Go back in your house. I will feed you. I'll bring the food to you, my dude. Oh. Good job. You got a little bit of bug guts on your chin from yesterday, my dude. My dude! Come on, let's go. It's time to eat. There you are. Here you go. Oh. There you go. Good job. Ready? Oh, try again. Good job. You got one more. Right? Didn't I get you one more? Oh, my bad mother. Here you are. Oh, good job. Last one is so small. Uh oh. Help, I'm being stalked by Egg Boy. Mm -hmm.